In today's lesson, we're going to begin looking at input and output tables. We begin with a problem that's very basic. In fact, we've seen these problems before, where we want to evaluate an expression for a certain value. In this example, we want to evaluate 2x plus 3 when x is equal to 5. In order to do that, we write the expression with the variable in parentheses like this. Then, we substitute the 5 in place of the x, and then we evaluate. We could do that by hand following order of operations, or we could simply type it directly into our calculator. Be sure to use parentheses where appropriate, and we see that the result is 13. So 2x plus 3 is 13 when x is 5. When I input a 5, I get a 13 out. And we can record these values in what's known as an input and output table. Let's make one. We have our input and output table, and when we input a 5, we get an output of 13. Let's record that in there. Now, let's look at another example with the same expression. Let's keep 2x plus 3, but this time, let's evaluate 2x plus 3 when x is 6. Once again, we write the expression with our x in parentheses, and then we substitute in place of the x the number 6. Again, we type that into our calculator, and we get the result of 15. When I put in a 6, I got out a 15. The input is 6, the output is 15, and we can record that in our table. Let's do another one with that same expression, 2x plus 3. What about when x is 7? Again, I write my expression with my variable in parentheses. I substitute the 7 in place of x, and then I evaluate, again, either by hand or by using my calculator. I get the result of 17. When I put in a 7, I got out a 17. So the input is 7, the output is 17, and I can record that value in my table input 7, output 17. And that's how we create input and output tables. We can create input and output tables for any type of an expression. Here's one that has an x squared in it. Create an input and output table for this. And let's first start by drawing our table, with the first column for inputs, and the second column for outputs and I'll give you several numbers that we're going to use as our inputs. Where did I get these? I just made these up right now. We'll use the inputs negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those will be our inputs. And our expression is x squared plus 5. And I will make sure that I put my x in parentheses, that's very important, and the squared on the outside. And now I do the substitution. When I input a negative 2, I have negative 2 squared plus 5. I can type that directly into my graphing calculator and get the output of 9. So when the input is negative 2, the output is 9. Can you come up with the inputs and outputs for the rest of this table? Pause the video here and fill in all of the blanks. Let's see how you did. When we input a negative 1, we get an output of 6. When we input a 0, we get an output of 5. When we input a 1, we get an output of 6. And when we input a 2, we get an output of 9. That tells us for the expression x squared plus 5, when we input a negative 2, the output is 9. When we input negative 1, the output is 6. When we input 0, the output is 5. When we input 1, the output is 6. And when we input 2, the output is 9. The table keeps our inputs and outputs organized. It actually becomes very useful, as you'll see in the coming days. What about a more challenging example? What if I want to create an input and output table for this expression, x squared plus 2x minus 4? Let's create a table with the left column for the inputs, 
and the right column for the outputs. And I'll give you the numbers that I want you to use for the inputs, and then we can calculate the outputs. Inputs will be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And our inputs don't have to be integers, they could be fraction or decimal, so let's do one decimal, 3.5. Our expression is x squared plus 2x minus 4. Put your x's in parentheses, and then begin doing the substitution. When the input is negative 2, I replace the x's with a negative 2. Then I go to my graphing calculator. I type that in exactly as it looks and I hit enter. When the input is negative 2, the output is negative 4. Can you fill in the rest of that table? Please pause the video here, fill in the outputs, and then when you're done, come back and let's see how you did. Let's see how you did. When we input a negative 1, we get an output of negative 5. When we input a 0, we get an output of negative 4. When we input a 1, we get an output of negative 1. When we input a 2, we get an output of 4. When we input a 3, we get an output of 11. And when we input 3.5, we get an output of 15.25. Now if some of your numbers didn't come out correctly, be sure to check that you use the parentheses when you type this into your calculator. If you don't use the parentheses, you won't get the correct result. And there you have the input and output table for x squared plus 2x minus 4. That shows us for each input what the output will be, and it's a great way to organize them. Now we can do all kinds of things which we'll do in the coming days. We can actually create a graph to look at what the picture of the function looks like. We can do all sorts of things, and we'll do that coming up. For now, that's everything you need to know about input and output tables.